change that style of play. They wouldn't have practiced with Ben. Obviously, they're used to Quiver. And as you're saying, with that up row as well, Imi obviously comes in as that secondary up, but it's always Quiver that is the main orb for yeah. that side. b 3 most likely will be picking it up as well, but it's dependent on how that goes down. And then yeah. previously, as I mentioned, Cinder is actually statistically the highest rated player currently throughout the Prem for up by, uh, all three games that he has played. And that's shown in his style of play as well. He's really aggressive. He's one of these clutch level players, backs up the aim, but also fantastic game sense. And CEX now are looking like a whole lot better team than we've ever seen before. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that one. And this is going to be a big game for both these sides. Looks like the knife round has been done. CEX won it. You'd like to think they're going to start off on the CT side. But I mean, AYE won't be too, too mad about this. They are undoubtedly a T-sided team. They have a very yeah. strong T-side team. Every person in the UK scene should know this. Um, I like to think of him, kind of like Fetish. Yeah. He has these amazing T sides, but yeah. just the most shocking CT half you see yeah. for some reason. It, it's true. Yeah. It is true. We've seen it. We saw it last week. Their CT was extremely lackluster and arguably lost in that game on cash. Mm -hmm. They just looked lost when they were trying to gain mid control. But again, going back to this AYE lineup, uh, when we're talking about the AWPers on Mirage, yep. you can go for a double AWP on both T and CT side and it not be too costly for you. It's always nice to have that opportunity, have that in your strat book. And with someone like B3N coming in, yeah, he hasn't played in a lot, well, a while. He's only got eight hours or so in the past two weeks, but a lot of CS does come down to muscle memory. And as long as you're not in-game leading, hmm. it, he should be okay. He should just be able to rely on his aim, just get a feel for this game, come back and just go from there. Yeah, what's good as well is obviously starting off on that CT half, it seems if things go through this way, it's not as overly sort of strategic early on. You will just have to rely on that aim factor. Yeah. So that Ben can sort of ease his way in towards the early rounds, then begin to pick things up. But it's going to be hard. I don't feel like CEX are really going to allow them to get away with any mistakes. They're going to bring their A game right now because they've got a small crack. You know, it's like in wrestling Hoss. If you know, if you have a damaged knee, I'm going to continue you hit that knee over and over again until you have to tap out Hoss. That's what CEX can do to what you go. Yeah. So, we are now into the pistol round to start things off here. T-side, we do have that Tech 9 armor onto Charlie. I always like having like almost a tank figure with that yeah. big, big weapon. Comparatively with pistols, of course. You have the armor as well. He's going to be a big player once they make the play towards this A-side. It's going to be a three-man stack for AYE as Medic does make some noise. They have got a smoke up. He's going to miss that jump, unfortunately. Fires a few bullets off. Does connect one with B3N as... That's a lot of aggression coming out from Mighty Max. Nice pick as well. So interesting enough, this is actually an old CEX strat where they used to play Cinder towards top mid, but they've actually switched up with Spandex. They wait out and then they move for that late round push on towards the A bomb site. But they've been allowed to get in. They have been given free reign, oh. but P3N coming back in hard and fast, returning to form with that opening headshot. But Medic wants none of this. We'll shut down two of the men. It's really on Mighty Max right now to pick up that frag, and he will do so. Takes down Charlie, and it's just Resu and Medic left. Medic not looking too healthy. 13 HP left on him. He's going to have to go huge if he wants to achieve much, but Resu finds one. It's not going to be enough, though. The defuse will come in. The retake does come out. Already two francs on the board for B3N. Fantastic stuff to kick off the first round. Yeah, it really was as well. And only having four members to defend that site as well, mm. it did definitely hurt CEX. You could see that they almost looked a little bit panicked. They tried getting in some post-plants positions, but there was nothing really there. Their player in CT got tagged down to 13 HP. He was more or less taken out of it. Uh, they tried having someone on T-steps in Rezu, but he, came, he peaked a little bit too late there. He couldn't take an effective duel. Yeah, he got one. He got taken down, traded out straight away as AYE. This is a great, great start for them here. And with B3N getting those two frags, now only going for P250 armor, it looks like they're trying to accelerate that AWP by into an earlier round here. Yeah, they want to try and get enough money onto B3N so you can pick that up as soon as possible. All Deagle strat, though. What are your thoughts on this for the T side? They got the bomb down. Mm -hmm. They've now gone all Deagles. This isn't standard. Usually you see P250 so they can get that buy in that third round, but... They've put a lot of investment here. The thing is, going back into the, sort of a deco buy, <laughs> B3M, 1 HP there off the back of that tag. It's absolutely ridiculous. So lucky to be alive now, and we'll just back off. No reason to be picked off at that point. He is still going to have a presence on the map if he stays alive for the meantime. But as I was saying, a deco round like this can be very effective. You can land those shots. You can transfer so much damage over, and they're such an impactful weapon from range. They're just very volatile. You will actually be able to find that frag or not. It's a risky run, and it is a high-risk round they're going for. They're stacked towards the A-bomb site as well with four men waiting. 
winding around these corners, just anxious to see if the push will come towards them as the bomb will be picked up. And it seems like the B play will be the ultimatum here. SEO's on the site. He will have to try and do some damage. Oh. Knocked down to 30 HP. Hasn't been able to find a frag just yet, but the spam comes in. Luckily, his teammate will arrive on the scene. That's Immy to save him off the back of the UMP spam. It's looking good so far. Everyone on CX basically below half health at this point. Not looking too fantastic at all as they try and make their play towards B. SEO pop flashes out. Finds Medic trapped out in the open. Really couldn't achieve anything. Charlie's trying to chip toe over as well. Wants to shut him down. Can't allow SEO to continue this reign of terror. But what will he find? Resu tries to come in from the background. Cinder luckily being able to control that deagle. But there's Immy with a 2k. And Mighty Max with a final frag on towards Resu the Lurker to shut it down. Yeah, this is exactly what you want to see from AYA, especially if you're Immy right now. He is a very momentum-based player as the in-game leader. And for him to get three frags in that one round there, that's only going to help him yeah. out here. On a side which we've said they're weaker on getting three frags, getting his confidence up just so early on, it's going to be hard for CEX to contest this. They're on a bit of a jumble sale here already in what is a buy round. They do have some utility. B3N facing mid with a P250 yet again. Questionable, to say the least. Charlie with a scout here as well. Going to have to see if he can get any picks with that. Is trying to play mid with Spandex here. So we see Charlie as well. A player like him with a scout in his hands, he is still going to be very lethal. Yeah. You can land those tags. Even then, you'll be able to make the opponent squishy enough that they can be shut down. But Charlie, unfortunately, won't be able to do anything. Dispatched straight away by Mighty Max with a spam medic. Controlling that spray to be able to equalize the situation with a 4-4 currently. But things are looking shaky. Cost an absolute Mexican standoff towards mid. Yeah, we're going to see Rezu now try and pop out, out of balcony. He is going to get one onto CT. That was Peggy. Now this is going to force one of the CTs to rotate on over. I believe that is B3N there as well with the P250. B is definitely the stronger of the two sites for the CTs right now. And CEX, it looks like they're about to win the gamble. They're moving over towards the A site here. Rezu still yet to fully poke on his, poke his head out. Just trying to hold angles for the time being. Check areas like jungle, like stairs. But B3N's found himself an nice M4 should be enough firepower to hold off this. In fact, they've rotated all their members over as well. This should be a 3v3. Until him, he's done that. Yeah. Spandex will be caught out towards that new bomb site though. That's going to shut one of them down. They're going to realize oh. as well, there's no time to commit towards that, a, uh, that Bobby B bomb site. So it will be an A take. The bomb will go down. A short plant from Medic here and they try and reposition, get into those advanced positions. SEO coming over. will spot one out. Somehow being able to stay alive there and do an awful lot of damage. And Imi comes in from the back and will be able to find that. Yeah, now Rezu just hiding in fireboxes here, waiting for his opportunity. Spots one through the gap. He's going to find it. And now he's 2v versus 2, and he's going to clean it up as well with the headshot onto B3N. Great, great play there from Rezu, patiently holding that angle, mm. getting the perfect angle as well. But something to highlight, it's nice to see Ezio and Imi combining. They're peaking well at the same time. We saw it in the second round on that B-bomb site. We saw it there in jungle area. But CEX, that defense hold, once bomb was planted was so so nice and of course spandex just being a distraction on that b site it forced enough of a rotation yeah it was only a two three second rotation but it was enough for them to get the bomb down get them in post plants and charlie's going to open up this fourth round with a headshot onto b3n yeah it made their lives so much easier and that's what Immy's going to try and do for his side but it's not working out too well they barely bring it back into a four versus four situation right now all of cx just want to back off they slow down no reason to go overly aggressive in terms of the tempo this early on into the round. Still a minute 20 left on the clock as they just line wait towards top mid, seeing if there will be a headstrong play come out potentially from the side of all your ego. Yeah, just playing very passively for the time being. We still don't have a very slow round previously. It looks like that seems to be their default for the time being. Rezu, last time he took a pick from Palace. This time just holding steps area. Does have some reinforcements behind him. They do throw a smoke over. It does look like they are going to set up for an A execute here. And it will be a four on three. This is certainly doable from AYE. Ezio, the lone player over on B, he's going to have to wait a little bit. As Imi does have an AWP in his hand, holding CT. This could go very, very badly for CEX unless their smokes and flashes are on point. 
Flashes go over the smokes to try and zone out the CTs as well, but will they be able to make the correct plays off the back of it and really capitalize? Peggy will be caught out and taken down, slain by Cinder. Fantastic stuff so far. SCO arrives on this scene, taps away Spandex with a nice little shot, and Mighty Max will be there to try and back him up as well. This dynamic duo trying to cause as much havoc as possible. There's Mighty Max with the connect as well, takes down Resu and the follow-up with the USB. This is absolutely glorious. Just leaves one man, Medic, trapped out of position. He's just going to be waiting. Has a good angle to do some damage here if he plays his cards right. Looking like he will get a little bit over-aggressive. Two men there. They should be able to stop him. SEO taps him up. Oh. This is ridiculous. Somehow he's going to be able to pick it up. A free K. And Medic does it all on his own. Absolutely insane stuff from Medic there. Able to find one versus three. Wins his team the round. All from almost an unwinnable position when they've got him pinned there in Palace. They know he's there. They could have got a pick on him from Jungle. How is he allowed to do that? It's absolutely ridiculous. Obviously, It really is. It's a nice position you can play off the back of that. But yeah. you had two men extra alive. Eskio tapped the bomb. They should have just been waiting at that point. Yeah. We saw the peak from Mighty Max that was, you know, it was kind of necessary at that point. Yeah. But it all just went downhill. It was really such a shame. Just so unfortunate. Fantastic stuff for Medic somehow being able to get away with that play. Yeah. And it was a bit of a misplay as well from AYE. You had Ezio tap the bomb, and you also had the second CT there. They essentially crossed paths, making yeah. the spray so much easier for the CEX player. Win himself the round. Good, good stuff. And now we're all tied two rounds apiece. An eco round coming in. They do get the headshot onto Spandex here. It's a good way to start this fifth round off. As it is going to be yet another AX cube going into this eco. Are they going to be able to dispatch off the CTs? Yeah, they found a lot of success towards A in the past. And nice stuff from Restu as well. Controlling his shots through the smoke. We'll take down Mighty Max as he's unaware of his actual position. Cinder will pick one up as well. And Restu just ignoring smokes at this point. It's ridiculous. This man's got heat vision. He's just annihilating everyone. Medic wants to try and claim one of his own as well. And he will do so. Takes down Peggy. It's just left on him. He traps out of position while Matt 10 in hand. He really is in such an unfortunate spot. A single nade could blow him away. They have the Molotov, but they're not going to even use the utility. They will just wait until he peeks and spray him away with the Kalashnikovs. Yeah, and this puts CEX into the lead for the first time this game. Going to see Charlie picking up the AWP. He finally gets an upgrade from that scout that he's had so many times. And again, AYE's economy has always been a little bit shaky. They've had B3 out on P250s. Ezio on one round was just with the USP. He's on a FAMAS this time. But they do have the utility for this. Two kits as well. Should certainly work in their favor. So we're going to have to see how CEX approach this one. It is looking like yet another slow play. Not trying to gain too much ground early on. Just hanging around at the top of mid. We've got Rezu playing very passive here, waiting for a push into Palace. I believe they sent one player into underpass as well. Again, just waiting for a push, trying to get a feel how the round's going. And just what by AYE are on. Towards top mid, that smoke will go down. It allows Medic to find his passage across. If he wants to push towards short, not a chance of getting picked off by the Orpa very early on. Nice use of the Molotov as well. Mighty Max actually takes an awful lot of damage from that. Going to be too happy. And this is causing a fair bit of a rotate. Everyone panicking towards mid, expecting this to be a late round A play, potentially. But B is going to be the key. Everyone just biding their time as I saw you tiptoe around Spandex, watching the flank, see if anyone's going to come from underpass. But meanwhile... It's the trio in front of him that I'm worried about. Everyone getting ready with the smokes lined up to try and zone out that site. Divide it into two and then go from the background. With the flashes to rely on, allow them entry. SEO, yes, unfortunately for him as well, that smoke will dissipate the Molotov he tried to throw in. Rescue peaks on his lonesome, unfortunately. One man up against one with a better angle. SEO will be able to dispatch him and all of a sudden it kicks off as well. Hoss, two frags come in. An absolute flurry of kills. Charlie will be able to trade out that frag, but he's left in a 1v3. Shouldn't be able to achieve too much for his dispatch here. 24 seconds left on the clock. Everyone is nearby. Yeah, it's just a matter of time now. He has picked himself up an AK. He does have the bomb on his back as well. Nice smoke there for a bit of a wall. And it looks like he's going to be allowed to get a plant down. And he does, but can he fight his way out? He gets one onto B3 and sprays towards short. Peggy's going to try spraying in. Does connect the shot. And they will get the defuse, but even so, how is Charlie allowed to plant in a 1v3 yeah. situation? That's just free money going towards CEX right there. Obviously, they were worried at that point. They didn't want to go overly aggressive and potentially throw that away because we can see, you know, usually what you go one of these teams, if they take that confidence hit early, it does yeah. really linger it, with them. Yeah. So they didn't want to try and give them any more breathing room to run away with things. Fantastically enough as well, if we look at the buy now, B3N is going to have that AWP in his paws, but... How effective is this going to be? This is what I'm worried about. Will this actually have the impact, impactful play coming into fold here? Yeah, where actually is he going to be playing? It looks like he is going to be trying to take a mid duel here. There is a smoke out for the time being. He's just going to be looking towards the top of mid. But again, Rezu just lurking around, playing very passive. They're really not showing much. 
Looks like Mighty Max getting a pop flash out here. They could double peek this with B3M, but the smoke is there to stop it. A little bit unfortunate. Mighty Max goes very deep, does get taken down. Ezio's going to get a two for one trade there, however, and he gets a third. Imi does fall in the process, however, as it is going to turn out to be an A execute without the bomb. That probably being the key factor here. Peggy gets a nice headshot onto Rezu now. It's just Charlie left. I believe he might try and be in save range here. But it will be a very long save if he does decide to do it. Yeah, a minute still left on the clock. It'd mm. be an absolute ridiculous struggle for him to do so. It's like you're going to see if you can get a pick on the board. Obviously, SEO is low. They'll be aware of that. Oh, B3N really should have been able to take him down. But unfortunately, he couldn't quite capitalize off that early peak. He was unaware of his positioning at that point. Charlie does recover the bomb. He's got a little bit of utility left to play with as well. And a fair bit of time. The flashbang comes out from Peggy to try and daze him for the meantime. But nothing's really going to occur as he just scurries away. Yeah, it's now about AOA looking to maybe close Charlie down. We saw Peggy gain some ground in towards Palace, but Charlie doing the same towards Short for CEX. It looks like he's going to be able to take a 1v1 duel on this site against the weaker player in Ezio here as well. 8 HP. But will he be expecting Ezio to be sitting by Van? He looks like once again he will be getting the plant down. Or not. Ezio comes around the corner, stops that one. Was a bit of a cheeky position as well there. I did like that from Ezio. Just go and sit in a very unexpected position. Just come on out. Get the frag. Easy. 4-3. Yeah. Seems like finally, Hoss, CX have opened the Hurt Locker. And they've had a good old rummage round. And they didn't like what I find. Because it's Hurt in there. Push coming out towards that B-bomb side, Hoss, to see what they can achieve. Actually, you're going to go for underpass. Most likely, he's going to be that connector player. We have one man at top mid as well with Medic. So, I mean... Cause a little bit of damage here. The boost going out as well. They can find their way through. There is a lot of potential for them to actually get around and have that pincer play on towards A. But B3N has the angle and has all the time in the world to line up that shot as well and find the trigger on towards Cinder. Rassi and Charlie. The last two men left standing on that side. Oh, fantastic shot coming out from Rezu. He's been absolutely on point so far in this game. If he can keep this up, it'll be glorious. But it's not going to matter. Mighty Max, he has a little bit of flair of his own. Yeah, it was actually a very big incendiary grenade there as well, coming out from AYE towards the uh, connector area. It tagged up about three of the CEX players, one of them down to less than 50 HP as well. Big, big damage coming in so early on in the round. Really limits the ability that those pistols can do, because you do really want to get up close with those. But when you're on 50 HP, you just can't get in range. As right now, it is going to be another buy round. Rezu gets tagged early on. Peggy's going to find a nice headshot. Looking for oh. Gets a second. And almost a third. There it is. Can he get a fourth? Yes, oh. he can. Going for the 5k. <laughs> and he gets it. What a play from Peggy. One versus five on that side. Does he need any teammates? Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. The one-man army and Peggy there as he just takes them down. Everyone just peeking on their yeah. lonesome. That is absolutely ridiculous from CEX. Communication just looked... Almost like Luminosity yesterday Yeah. on, on uh, Inferno B site. Just trying to take 1v1s instead of 3 fours v ones Yeah, that was very, very odd there. Great stuff off the back of Peggy, though, taking those shots, biding his time and picking them all off one by one. Medic wants to go over aggressive here as well. Could actually take down Imi if he gets her in time, but oh. good stuff from me. Very fantastic position. Bakes him into the Molotov yeah. as well to transfer a glorious amount of damage over. And here goes Essio with a cheeky little spam through the smoke. We'll be able to dispatch one man, but is he aware that there's an abundance of T's waiting on the other side? Ready to go for that push towards B. They are setting up some smokes here. Their primary aim is to get the bomb down and then anything else that comes with it it's just a bonus. Smokes do go out. So they are going to execute towards the B-bomb site. Medic coming in here with the Tech-9. Ezio's there. He gets one. Looking for more. Has to switch to his USP. Oh, and he gets the headshot. Stops the bomb plant as well. Good, solid stuff from the young Welshman. As B3N's going to get a nice pick in there as well. Switches out to his AWP. Just Charlie left. Looking for Deagle shots. for oh, Three members very low. Could have potentially found something. But not able to. Nice clean round coming in there from AYE. No one died. And you can see the bank that they're starting to put together now. It really is looking good. Especially with AYE. Seven rounds already. Mm -hmm. On their CT side, Emmy is going to be so happy with this. And they've still got their strongest half to come. Yeah, this is the thing. Uh, you know, It's fantastic they've been able to find their foot in early. Mm. Actually rack up a few of those rounds. Because they do struggle most of the time on their CT half. So being able to... Lay the foundation is glorious. Emmy wants to try and make it a little bit harder for the side of CX as well as he kicks things off. A fantastic frag on towards Cinder, one of those high impact fraggers on the side. Oh, so unlucky for B3N as well with that flick. 
That would have been such an advantage into the round. But this positioning could be absolutely amazing from SEO. The trigger patience on display. They try and check the angle a bit too late. He finds one frag, wanted to go for more, but couldn't double up. But B3N is there. If they continue on with this push, oh. he really should be able to slow them down. Yeah, looks like they are going to back away, though. Mighty Max coming in with the flank. This is going to be so unsuspecting. But they have just rotated out of apartments, going over towards A now. They're going to get a free bomb plant. And then the struggle comes in free way. Of course, I mentioned their economy. They have nothing to lose by going for this retake. They have a good set of utility as well. They've got, what, two smokes, two flashes, a nade, and an incendiary kits as well. Certainly a doable retake here. That's very true indeed. Charlie oh. actually goes for the peak as well. That's big. 2v2 now. Certainly doable. If we look at the positioning here, Medic wanted to try and go for that frag, got a little bit over-aggressive, would have paid off, but unfortunately for him, didn't. The bait play as well, they're trying to force Mighty Max to run in. <laughs> Follow it up. Resu playing absolutely gloriously right now, off the back of these positions. Great work of his teammate Medic there to bait him in. They went for the old trap, ran straight into their crosshairs, and followed. Yeah, exactly right. But now we're in this territory where CX lose this round. They're on yet another eco. They have to start stringing rounds together right now if they want a good solid number as we start to approach half time. A lot of utility being used towards the mid. We've got smokes being used, flashes and nades. We can already see Medic's been tagged down, but Spanstorm was too, but he just easily takes B3N out in that mid window. That's the big green AWP down. And now CEX, they're just going to do what they do. They fall back after a pick and default back into a slower play. And I really like the way they're doing this as well. Into a team like Away who are using a sub, who maybe aren't always, or they're not going to be all together. Communication's not going to be on point. So defaulting back into a slower play really kind of puts Away on edge. And when you're on edge, you tend to make calls or make plays that you wouldn't normally do so. And with someone like B3N in the team who they're not going to get like have a feel for, I really like this. Yeah, it's been fantastic stuff. We've seen that initiative actually coming into mm. play, which is very different from what you're ego. And that slight change in the formula could be actually a massive help to them more than a deficit. Oh, so stuff. You can see the patience really on the side. No one wants to make that first mistake. They don't want to give the other team the opener. Cinder is the lurk in this role, though. Towards that B-bomb site, has the smoke. We'll try and plant that seed of doubt. Make them panic. I think they're Look very anxious about the play that is going to come out. Mighty Max straight away rotating over towards the B site. This yeah. is what I was saying. AYE are very, very jittery right now. Ezio, he's going to find one. But once again, it's going to be an eight play. And it's going to be Peggy under balcony. He's not going to get a 1v4 this time round. But Mighty Max might. He's already got two. Oh, he's the... going to tap away with the USP, not find anything. Gets it just after the bomb plant, but he gets the frag nonetheless. And now the three versus two retake can come in. Charlie with the AWP. So long as they don't step in towards his crosshair, they should be okay. They have one smoke as well in the hands of Mighty Max. That Molotov's not going to do anything from CEX. Max just peeking on up here. Does get one frag. Just smoke off. Smoke off T-steps and they should all be good. Watch for them. That smoke will go on towards the bomb. SEO is actually allowed to cross. Charlie getting aggressive. Wants to try and Has push to get it. Out. He's got it. Away through the smoke. So very close. Got couldn't it. quite find it. SEO will claim it. But tries to take him down. Unfortunately, you wouldn't find the frag, but they got the round. That's the more important thing here. Yeah, I feel like a smoke towards T-Steps would have been a lot safer. Yeah, would have been able to zone Charlie out, yeah. but it's just obviously... The it, panic. It came to the risk. No, yeah. it's, it's not even that. It's no? just you want to try and smoke off the bomb. Yeah. You can jump on. Max would have been alive at that point. It was just for the right time when they had two CTs up, it would have worked. I guess. It was just as well the point of them actually getting across Charlie's crosshair. Yeah, it, it would have forced Charlie to peek as well, because he yeah. would have to have gone through as soon as we saw the tap, because he wouldn't have been aware. But the... Push towards that B site. Everyone trying to flood their way in. Monster actually doing a little bit of damage. And their toes are going to be quite hot, but it's going to be the bullets that are even hotter as they get railed through the heads of Imi and Essio, and they get taken down. Fantastic stuff so far from CEX. An explosive play towards the B site has worked out well for them. The retake will be coming out shortly. The three man play B3 and Peggy and Mighty Max. We've seen all of them have actually had fantastic aims so far, but will they live up to it in this retake? The push from Spandex is what's happening with that Tech 9. Somehow finds the frag and the follow-up on towards B3N, and this has gone so, so far downhill. It really hasn't worked out too fantastically for the side of your Ego. Mighty Max does have to back off and just save this M4. Yeah, he does have someone chasing him, and that is going to be Medic. Gets that frag for free, as he will now be making his way towards Palace. Looks like he might have... A little bit of a contest over towards this site. He's just going to sit here.
try not to lose it. And lose it, he will not. And it looks like AYE will be able to force a buy here. Mighty Max could drop a Famas if needed. It looks like they should all be dandy. Two rounds left. Do you reckon AYE can hit that double digits? There's definitely potential there. They, you know, if they find their way through this round, I think overall it's just that confidence factor. If they're able to land their shots again, pick up this round and go through, it can be done. It's just hard because obviously V3N, no armor on the back of him. He's really one of these more important roles. He's been quite a catalyst to actually kick in rounds off. So if he's not able to live up to maximum efficiency, it's, it's going to be quite hard for them. As once again, it is going to be some B aggression early on here from CEX, making their presence known. Ezio once again is going to be ready and waiting to receive this push as... Throw a flashbang in, does peek across, doesn't find anything however, he is going to be waiting here. Molotov does go in, will force him out of his position, the nade follow up as well, will not connect onto him however. As Immy has rotated round, he spots out one, not able to connect the shots however, to find the frag. Ezio spotted the head of Rezu. Got a little bit of tag off. He's going to find one. Tries to get a second. Will do. That's bomb drop. Immy oh. coming in here as well. The dynamic duo. I mentioned it earlier. It's just Charlie left. Orp in hand. He's just going to try and slide on back. Try and maybe get a peek off here. Find a frag. But good solid teamwork from these two. Yes, Charlie will nice. find one. Oh, that Molly's going to find Azio. I don't even need to. Forced Azio to actually go for the peek. So he was able to land that headshot. And Charlie, he's doing damage. But not only that. Being able to tear through that economy of the CTs. Won't matter though, B3N. Nice little jump as he finds that frag on towards Chai. That's nine rounds pick up, and that's what I was saying. It has been able to bust the economy of CX. No money in the bank. It's not looking fantastic. They've been denied the loan hoss. Yep. Their credit rating was far too low. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it really was. So they will have to just work with the Jumble Cell buy, see what they can do with this mixed bag of weapons two Deagles, two AK 47s, and one UMP over on the side of Cinder. We do know, however, that they're not scared about using deagles. It's true. Their second round, they went for a deco. Didn't get anything from it, I believe, however. But tried it nonetheless. Mighty Max here in a great little position in Sandwich. Could really do some damage, because Smoke's mollies, they're just not going to find him. He's just going to sit here patiently. Finds one. Doesn't find the second, however. That could be big. Three versus three now. With Charlie down to 15 HP, B3N is really going to be a linchpin here. He needs to get at least one frag as they try to get the bomb down, I feel. Yeah, he's going to be that catalyst, as we were saying before. Such a critical roll into this round. But Immy still living up to the absolute ridiculous plays he's been pulling out. Really been quite consistent into this game. B-Friend, nice shot through the smoke. Such a tight angle, but he still does the damage. A minute left on the clock, and Medic, he's panicked. Absolutely terrified of what's gone down. All his teammates slain around him. He's forced to rotate off, wants to try and make his way towards that B-Bomb site. Hoping the welcome mat will still be there. It's free at the moment. And this could be the smarter play. b 3 and so very low. Two HP left on him. SEO there. If they both just stick towards the site, even if that bomb gets planted, retaken together, even though you know, B3N is basically dead at this point. He's a dead man walking. He is still another fixture on the map that can allow them to retake a little bit easier. That audio cue will alert them what's going on. They'll rotate off towards that B-bomb site as they realize oh, this has actually occurred. The medic, the close angle, the UMP, it's going to be so devastating. That first shot will take down B3N. Very quickly, it just depends if he wants to go for the peak or how he's going to play it. Terrified as well. Panicking that SEO will actually be coming from short. Not sure which angle to clear, but he clears the right one at the first time as he takes down b 3 and SEO is there in the rear with the gear, though. M4 in hand, locked and loaded, waiting for the peak to come out from Medic. He does have the range advantage, but he's got to tap that bomb soon. We'll try and force him out. b 3 n panicking as he charges round. Medic spun oh. away, will land that headshot and somehow gets away with it. Good, good stuff there from Medic. I was a little bit worried as well because in his rotation, he wasn't going to pick up another gun. He was yeah. just stuck with UMP and Deagle. But really, right at the end there, using that close range to his advantage, connects the headshot with UMP and finds himself the fraggers. Do you want to take a quick look at the scoreboard? See who's, who is doing well and who could pick up the game. Spandex and Cinder back down at the bottom there, five frags apiece. And I was going to say, someone who has been really sick this game is Ezio. He's been on that B site. Yeah. Had it's solid holds, just delayed the pushes from CEX as well to allow him to rotate in. He has been making some sick, sick plays. It's great stuff as well, because I mean, it's quite odd, because obviously he's out of his comfort zone. Yeah. He, uh, he isn't actually currently playing no. from his home. He's in your shed. He's, he's in, yeah, he's in my house. <laughs> yeah. In, in my shed, playing EPS yeah. on my PC. So. Well, my other PC. Yeah, your spare PC. Your spare PC. Yeah. 
So it's interesting. You know. He's not going to be the only be the only one doing that tonight either, is it's, he? It's true. Jakey's also <laughs> from, from Euphrag. You should just open up a Lancaf. That's basically what it is. Yeah. Shedlan. Yeah. New Premier Gaming Cafe, Central London. Almost well, central. Well, South London, of course. Stabsville. <laughs> <laughs> Let's jump into the action, though. Into the first pistol round, and this is where you really go. Nine times out of ten, actually excel. It's where they're at their peak. When they're allowed to be on that T side and go into those strategies. It will actually be in a pincer play with three men coming from underpass. Or oh, Medic in the back oh. lines being able to find that first frag. Spandex as well in that elevated angle. Fantastic stuff. They've completely blown them out of the water. They're not allowing this play to happen. It's just B3 and the standing. And he isn't standing for long as he gets taken down. Yeah, some really nice aggression coming up towards the top of mid. Really pincering the, the movement of AYE. As soon as the three members got out of underpass... They were like fish out of water. They just couldn't do anything. Flapping around. Where do we look? Where do we look? Where do we shoot? And the answer is nowhere because you're dead. Of course. Yep. Dead now. Yep. Which is an absolute shame. A great way to start things off on the side of CEX as well. And this could be even better. The spam through the smoke transfer in a ridiculous amount of damage. Medic he even wants a frag and he'll find one. Forced to reload. Now he has to reposition. But this is where Spandex is going to be so vastly key. Doesn't even get the frags towards short. He just flicks up and takes down him. This is glorious. Just leaving B3N and Mighty Max in a horrific spot. Mighty Max the last man standing now. And he will be taken down. Sprayed down. And that hailstorm of bullets out of the UMP from Spandex. Not only that, he's going to get a bit of a cash injection as well from those frags. Yeah, he is. You've got to love the uh, the SMGs. Just really accelerate your economy. You can already see that they're just going to stick with them again here. Three SMGs, one MP9, two UMPs, because they just want to get more frags. Just keep the FAMASs at range. Let the SMGs go aggressive. It's a very uh, low-risk, high-reward kind of situation here. Because mm. you're going to rebuy after this round anyway. It doesn't really matter if you lose it. But if you can gain 600 bucks, 1,200, 1,800 for a 3K, then you're going to be in a great position. Rezu with one. Rezu trying to get a second there, unfortunate. He is going to switch out to the USP. He finds the frag, and again, easy, easy round for CEX. Yeah, great stuff. Fantastic holds actually coming out for them on the board. Everyone looking on point. Have a bit of a look as well. Starting to look healthy. I mean, interestingly enough for me so far, he's he's trailing behind two frags behind Medic there, but Rezu has actually been very on point. He's one of those players that I've, I've said seems to be a little bit inconsistent when he does show up. But since he's been taking a step back from that calling role, been focusing more just on his, you know, his own self as a fragger, yeah. as that support role, he's been doing an absolutely fantastic job. Yeah, he really has. He's he had some great, great rounds, individual play in that first half, mm. where he was just lurking around, being very patient, and working off of that. Yeah, you can definitely see, you know, he has improved overall mm. a lot yeah, more. Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's it's great to see that coming to effect. It sort of binds CX together as well. There was always that issue where it actually was one of these. Sort of, you know, he, he wasn't as big of a fractor as everyone else in that team. Yeah. He never really lived up to the same sort of skills. But now he is actually stepping up repeatedly. And if he can get that on more of a consistent level, it'd be a fantastic basis to have in the lineup. Slow stuff right now, Hoss. A minute still left on the clock, and no contact has been made between either side. Still just using utility, trying to get a feel of how this round is going to go. We are going to see Rezu. Looks like they want to go for a bit of a buddy system over towards that A site. However, they're going to go a little bit too deep and find nothing because it looks like it will be a B play coming in with 45 seconds left from Alter Your Ego. Spandex is here ready. A nade primed in his hand. This should do quite a bit of damage as soon as he hears the footsteps come on in. Oh. Medic's going to find one shot. Nice pick coming in there from Immy. Does turn it back into a four versus four. Charlie should get some frags with the CZ here. Rattles off a few bullets. Trying to look for some more in here. Peggy trying to get an angle here. Spandex will go down to Ezio. Charlie did get something with that CZ. Ezio trying to get another one. Does so. Got a few shots on to Medic. He does have some time to reload here as well. The HP really isn't good for him, however. Needs to get rid of Medic, and he will do. One versus one against Cinder. He knows exactly where Cinder is as well. Seven seconds left. Goes for the fake. Trying to go for the frag. Has to go for it this time round. Cinder's going to peek and he's going to find the frag. Nice patient play there coming in from the CT side. Yeah, that was great stuff. Absolute explosion on towards that B-bomb site. It could have been glorious, but was snatched away from underneath him. So close to jumping over that final hurdle, but didn't really go their way. A lot of they were discussing how they wanted to approach this next round economy-wise. It looks like they will go for just a little bit of investment into these pistols. A little bit of utility as well, Ezio. Being the nade man, it seems, as they execute towards this B site once again. It looks like they almost want to just get this over and done with. Get it done, out of the way, quick. Get on in towards this B site. They do try and smoke Spandex out. 
but he can just spray through this smoke. He gets one, gets two, finally gets taken down, but Charlie's here to offer himself some support. But they get the bomb down. Yeah, and well, that's going to be that most redeeming factor as well. That was the whole idea behind the round. It didn't really matter how many men they lost. Oh. Matter, they got the bomb down. This could be fantastic as well, doing damage towards that economy. Resu and Medic so vastly low, but not really going to work. B3M walks straight into him. The contact, as he says hello, and gets taken down. The defuse will come in. That's going to be 11 rounds on the board for CEX to the 9 of Auto Your Ego. Yeah, they should put them on about yeah six, seven k a piece here for away, so they can get a very luxurious buyout for utility on almost everyone, I believe. So there looks like they're deciding if B3N wants to go for the AWP or not, and it looks like he will. What was the spawn he had here? Not overly fantastic, but no. still could go for that mid pick if he wants to try it. Let's see if he will opt to go for that. Would have definitely been one for a a pick, as it looks like they are going to see the nade come up. From Connector, Cinder oh. should connect that, and he does. Mighty Max did get a trade elsewhere on the map, though, but Himmy with a nice rotation here. Good, good pick there on get the head of Rezu, but Spandex just straight up mid, gets that for free, and now he has the elevated position on these two players who are just stuck here in mid. I can't really do much with it. does tickle the players with a Molotov, but now it's just Charlie left. Where do AYE want to execute to? They still have over a minute on the clock. The bomb is arguably in their control. They don't have it picked up, but they can just fall back and get it once they know where Charlie is. Then it's about where do they want to go to. Yeah. Oh. Oh. The thing is, us. All that hypothetical stuff doesn't really work out when you've got someone that can just mm. roam around and rip his way through your entire arsenal. He's doing just that. That man is going to be Charlie in a one versus two. Everyone looking a bit green around the gills on the side of Alter Ego, but they've been allowed to welcome in towards that B bomb site. No resistance there. They've been given it openly. 45 seconds left on the clock. That bomb will be planted. They've got the after plant positions, but Charlie has utility. He isn't he aware it's that it is actually the B bomb site just yet, though. Yeah, he will be sniffing it out. We'll clock on what's going on. Finally, work out what the situation is. Begins to rotate over. Wants to play a little bit of a mind game as well as he taps that vent down, hoping that they'll think he's on the self boost and he's coming from short, but they won't be buying it. The flashbang goes in. Great stuff from Mighty Max. Still buying him a little bit more time, and he is actually going to go for the save. The smarter play here. It's going to be quite hard for him to retake that, and he will just back off. A little bit strange that he thought that was going to be an A play after he got the pick there as well. Hmm. Real mind games, he thought it was a double bluff, but it just wasn't the case. But he will be saving seven and a half thousands worth of gear. Which you can't complain. No, you really can't. Any little helps us. Yeah. Now, here's where things get quite clutch though. We're into the area of the crutch the crunch offs. Yes. Cinder can drop, but he just goes for the greedy or play. Oh no. Double orp on this oh. CT side. This could be ridiculous. This actually gives them so many more options as well with one of those going towards that B bomb site. Then we see Medic going for the aggressive pick towards ramp. We'll reposition now. If he goes for this mid pick, they do actually have wide angles. So he could take him down if he wanted to. But didn't have the confidence behind him. Yeah, but Charlie is going to find that pick from short on to B3N. Did take a big hit for it, however. But as long as he keeps his range with that AWP, that damage shouldn't really be too much of an issue. Ezio finds one, expecting the double peak, does flick on over. Cinder will be able to dispatch him, and now it's all on Peggy. We saw him go huge earlier with a 1v5. He's going to barbecue sa uh, Spandex to death right there. But Medic has this angle, has the elevation, has the pick, and that will be that. Yeah, such a shame. Everyone just getting completely destroyed in slap rounds, and the cash isn't too happy with them at all as well off the back of that. They picked up that one round, and then losing the follow-up, it's reset the economy. So they're going to be struggling to get a buyout, doing what they can, and we'll actually go for that vast force, the risky play coming in. Two Tet Nines, one Deagle. The AWP actually over on Imi now. He's picked that back up. Obviously, we said he's more of the secondary AWP. He will occasionally go for it when he wants to. He does have the capability behind him. Mm. This is quite interesting. It's going to be a ramp burst off the back of Imi trying to find the first pick. He'll peek out. The flashbangs will go over to allow him to roll in towards the bomb site, and he's going to be the man just focusing to when the rotate comes in. He wants to try and shut them down to uh, make their lives a little bit easier, and there it oh, is. Almost. Oh, so close, but unfortunately for him, timing slightly off. He panicked a little bit. The apple crumble was on display, and he couldn't take down Medic. Misses oh. the follow up front as well on towards Resu. This this is absolutely catastrophic somehow. Peggy trying to claw the round back. Doesn't want it to go that far south. Will take down Medic. But Cinder arrives on the scene. Immy with the third and final whiff so far. This is ridiculous. 
This round could have been in their hands, but they still have a chance. There's still possibility, but Resu on the retake will find that frag on towards Essio. What else can they achieve? The nades roll over. Mighty Max going huge with the AK, but it's just left on Imi. Really no chance into this. Makes sense to save onto the AWP, but the defuse will come in, and that's such a shame. That would have been a huge round. Great play across the board. It just came down to those slight whiffs there, and that is, is such a shame. Three whiffs in a row. Each one would have been so crucial. Get that pick on jungle. Pick on CT. It makes the CT suddenly become... Instead of two members, you only have one there to deal with. Just extremely unfortunate. And we'll have to see what he can do with the AWP this time round, however. He is going to go for a quick pick towards mid. Looking towards Connect and not really going to see much. And CX on their CT side haven't put meant much, uh, much aggression towards window. It's always been from this Connect area. Not much too sh uh, from short either. But Imi just holding here, waiting to see if there is any aggression coming out towards the general mid area. Of course, we know CX, their, C their T side was passive, so you can really expect their CT side to be extremely passive as well. Slow stuff right now as they lie in wait towards top mid. It's only early days yet, so no reason to go overly aggressive and be free and as he just looks around, sticking it under pass, trying to find out if anyone will go for the mid pick, but it is actually going to be Cinder. Rails down, Imi connecting that headshot. Suddenly, there was four. Four and a half now as well. Mighty Max nearly burnt out to a Chris. Spandex wants to go overly aggressive. He didn't clear this correctly angle. He could actually be taken down. Tap with a Tech 9. Mighty oh. Max wanted to try and fly in, but couldn't quite do it. Was eventually fragged. Luckily, Peggy was there on the scene to trade it out. Four HP left on the man, though. Basically a half-life now. Medic's going to go in, takes him down with a spam, the pre-fire. And it's just left on B3N. Peeking out, but it's not going to work out. Yeah, very easy round there. It has to be said for CEX going in towards the eco of AYE. This is now dangerous territory. AYE uphill climb coming in here. They can't let a single round slip, otherwise they have to play for overtime. Are they even going to be given an opening here? That's the question. It's going to be a three-man strong defense coming in towards this A site. Cinder's going to go really aggressive here. Could catch them out. Ezio does get the molly. How have they been able to get this far in? He's not going to find one. Rezu still in there as well. Mighty Max takes him down. Ooh. Gets caught with a smoke out. That could have been extremely catastrophic. Does get the pick onto Charlie and Jungle. It's do or die at this point as it well. It really is. And it looks like they're going to get Medic as well. This could be the round where they start to bring this one back. They have the opportunity to get a safe plant. They should be able to get in safe post plant positions as well. Spand X. Flashes his way through that smoke as he pushes into the site, but the crossfire, the double-ended nice sword. Volley. They will find him. Not really much he could achieve in that spot, and great stuff. And as we're saying, there still is potential. There's still life. They've still got the firepower. They want to bring the pain, but they're struggling. The AK buys will come in. Luckily for them, Cash is holding on. They've got the lifeline host, but they can't make that same mistake twice. They have to link the rounds now. If they don't yeah. link that round, that's going to be a reset, and then we will see CX most likely picking this up with the following round because they're forced into the eco. And the thing is, if they link this round as well, it puts CX onto the eco round as well. It will put AYE, should things go to plan, on that 14-13 markers. Mighty Max, I don't know if he's expecting Cinder here. He will fire off some shots. He is expecting Cinder. Gets the headshot. Are they expecting Rezu here? They now know exactly where he is. Mighty Max falls as well. Peggy's going to be trying to make his way on in here. Does connect the shot onto Rezu. They know there was the weakened member of Medic in jungle, and this A site is really looking like the weakness of CEX right now. Spandex. Once again, trying to flash through the smoke. Wanted to go for the push. We'll opt to just jump on towards Ticketbox, aware that there's that slight gap. Oh, oh somehow wow. Charlie finds the fall in frag. This man's an acrobat as he glides through the air, taking down Imi and recovers it into a two versus two. Even Stevens in terms of the battle of attrition, but it's still going to be very hard. The individual skills so very high on all these players, but who will land the shots? The taps come out. b 3 and will claim the head of Charlie, and Peggy will take down Spandex as well. There it is. What I was saying, 2K is the average. Well, about 2.5K is probably the average for CEX right now. It will put them on an eco. They do have to save. They're going to get, what, 2.4K, I think, for this one. Mm -hmm. Which, again, when you're buying up an M4 armor you're not going to have that utility available in the next round unless they find themselves some frags here. Looks like it will just be some all-out mid-aggression as Emmy's going to be given a shooting gallery here. Finds one on Charlie, but he is down to 22 HP. Molotov will go out, but it gives the rest of the team the A-site. They're going to be going for a flank here as well, round towards mid through connector, and this round is going to be free. 
Yeah, what's great there is, as you were saying, that like distraction play with Imi there, taking the full fight. Everyone's so focused on him. The tunnel vision kicks in. They were aware of what's going on. They have to reposition it. It's going to be that three-man push from behind. They're just going to try and converge on the site, do as much damage as possible, and that's really all they can do. If they can potentially get two frags on the board here, scurry away with those extra two scavenge weapons, it's going to look good for CEX, yeah. but that's the best-case scenario. Yeah, Rezu has found himself a smoke and an AK as well here, which means that if needed, he can actually drop to a teammate, allowing a second teammate to get some of that utility up here. It looks like they are just going to scurry away with what they have in their hand. Sindel won't get that luxury. Again, just a shooting gallery here. Yep, everyone just offering themselves up as sacrifices. They will fall down. Luckily, though, Resu gets away with the AK. That was the important factor. They still have that extra bit of cash going into the bank into this round. Such an important one. Round 28 here. 13-14 is the scoreline. Ridiculous stuff. Down to the wire, and it's getting closer and closer every second. The buys will come out. A little bit of cash left over on towards Spandex and Resu, which is nice because they really need it. Yeah, they, they certainly do. And again, it looks like we're going to see a bit of an aggression come out from CEX, almost with the buddy system. Cinder and Medic going towards those steps. Medic will fall back to his typical jungle position, however, as Spandex does start to hear some players coming towards short. He will get taken down straight away, and this should open up the B-bomb site. Charlie, he's left here all by himself, and they will be able to find that one as well. That's Mighty Max and Ezio combining. Five versus three. Plant's gonna come down. Utilities there, they still have flashes, nades, mollies, smokes galore. Do alter your ego. And this has to be a save for CEX here, I feel. Maybe poke your head and see if you can play it for one or two exits. But it looks like we're going to be seeing 14-14. It will come down straight to the wire. So if you look at it as well, Medic's positioning is fine. If he just wants to stay here and wait, because obviously it's, it's real hard. If you're coming through that small vent, yeah. you can't jump around. It's going to be really awkward for you to try and get through and actually find that frag. It's an off angle as well. You can't be seen from behind it as that blind spot unless you're peeking from in front. So he is just perfectly sound to just sit there and wait. Could actually pick up this frag on towards SEO as well if he doesn't check it. And there it is. It is going to pay off. But now things get a little bit tight. Had to try and go for the follow-up on towards Mighty Max. Still aware of his position, but couldn't quite take him down. Yeah, Mighty Max did fall there, however to the bomb. But again, that shouldn't really hinder them too much. They still have the economy to fall back on should they lose this. But the problem is if CEX lose this, it's game to AYE. Yeah. It's almost a mirror of how we were seeing when it was 14-12 in favor of CEX. Charlie going all out with the AWP here. Going to need a miracle. They want to keep themselves in this one. That's what we were saying. It just came down to that one small factor. As soon as they got that confidence behind them again yeah. off the back of that round, you could see it start coursing through them, and they was excited and ready to return. Yeah, and they got that confidence from the A site as well. They tried some aggression towards B on their Ricos, on their buy rounds. They were trying to go to B. They mix it up, go to A, get those entries. And they just come out big. It was just that change of pace that made things mm. so vastly different. One man actually found that close angle as well is Resi. This is such a great spot, because we were saying pri uh, previously to this, you really have to push past. He's not open at any point in this. It's such yeah. a close angle, and it's going to be very hard for them to find it. Max played this one great on their CT. Will Resi do the same, though? That is going to be the question as everyone begins to tiptoe their way towards the site, and now they begin to barrage their way out, bounding up the stairs towards it. Peggy will actually try and recover the situation, but it's not going fantastically. A three versus one now, as it's just B3N. He's going to have to go on to make a quad kill to take this down. Still not aware of the positioning. Medic comes gliding past him, lands down, and they do pick up that match point round, and it's not absolutely... It's, you know, this, this is really sort of the deficit position we didn't want him to go into now. You look at that cash, they will be able to shuffle things around to get the full way out, but... It, this is going to be crazy stuff. It's either yeah. do or die right now. You can take it this is. into overtime if they link up this round, but it's so tense. Yeah, how do you play this, though? Do you go for your standard A play, which we've seen, a fast A play? As it looks like it is going to be the weaker site. They have gained some ground over on A, as it looks like there is going to be a little bit of a boost up there over on B. I believe it's Cinder who's just playing the other side of the smoke. This could be huge if he walks through. He's just going to re-smoke it. He, they heard the underarm as well, so they know he's close. Audio cue Look at this. Two players rotating towards CT as well. This is going to be huge. The information play coming out from B as well. They just cleared out apartments. They don't see anyone at the top of mid. It has to be an A play coming out here. They're going to flash in. Cinder doesn't decide to walk through, however, but he will get the frag onto B3 and sprays through. Gets another onto Ezio. Charlie takes down Peggy. And now it's just Mighty Max left. One versus four now after he finds the frag onto Cinder. He's going to get two. Can he get three more? This is ridiculous. 15 HP left on him. There's no chance in hell he should be able to pick up this round. Uses the flashbang to try and go for the face. 
57 left. Seconds left on the clock. The Molotov will go down. Still three men to deal with in some fantastic angles. And Spandex will find that frag. Takes down Mighty Max. That's going to be a 16-14 scoreline. The full 30 rounds in the first game of today's games in the Prem. And that is ridiculous. I'm